Super Mario Maker 2 has a lot of tools to build levels around to make anything interesting and fun. However, sometimes players will be able to bypass levels that you make by finding an oversight you did not expect. Whether it be going over an entire challenge or having a power-up where they shouldn't, these are all important possibilities that need to be considered when you build a level. These skips are called cheese. Basically, when you beat a challenge or a puzzle in an easier way than the developer wanted you to. I've played a ton of levels in my time, and that also means that I've cheesed a ton of levels as well that might have been great, but I was able to skip them entirely. So today, I'm going to be giving out some tips on how you can help prevent cheese in your levels. Each one of these can make the difference between your level working perfectly or completely breaking apart, so this may be one of the most important videos I make on this game. Before we start, please remember to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video, as that will help me out a ton. But with that being said, let's jump right into the methods to prevent players from cheesing your levels in Super Mario Maker 2. My first method is probably the most common type of cheese I see, that being the roof is so short over another section of the level that you can literally just go over it. This one is pretty simple, just fill the roof up all the way to the top, or have a roof already over the player so they can't even have a chance to climb it. This one really just comes down to laziness. You're going to want to fill it up all the way to the top. No matter how tall it might be, a player might still be able to get around it. Also, make sure the top layer is a block the player can't go over, as some don't let the player go on top while the others do, so be careful of that. A good one to just use is ground since players can't go over it. By the way, this doesn't just go for low ceilings, but low walls as well. There's almost never a situation where having a low wall would be better than having one go all the way up to the top of the screen. Just make it go all the way up, or at least to a ceiling. These two are by far the most common cheesable moments I see in levels, and they're also the two with the easiest solutions. Just don't be lazy and make sure that the player will not be able to skip over segments. There's no such thing as having a wall go too high up, except in maybe some very specific circumstances. I mean, I can't really think of anything right now where it would be better to have a low wall, but there's a possibility that that might be the case, but usually just have it go all the way up to the roof or to another ceiling. Next up is a somewhat similar topic. That being to make sure your walls and ceilings can't be destroyed, when you don't want them to be. It's usually best to just stick with ground as the walls and ceilings are indestructible, and it's usually the nicest looking one as well. However, a lot of people like to use bricks, hard blocks, or even some other things as walls as well, which is fine, unless there's an item present in your level to simply break them. There have been so many levels where I just have a hammer suit, enter a boss room, but then see that the walls are made from hard blocks, and just mine them away. Now like I said, most of these are okay to be used as long as there are absolutely no items that can destroy them in the level. The only one that should never be used though are bricks in the Super Mario World style for ceilings. They can always be hit and become intangible from the bottom whether Mario is big or small. Using these will almost always lead to either cheese, an unfair death, or a soft lock. None of which are good. Now let's go over which items can be destroyed and which items can destroy them so that you know which ones to use or not. There are seven types of breakable blocks, those being bricks, question mark blocks, hard blocks, ice blocks, clouds, frozen coins, and invisible blocks. If Mario has any type of power-up, he can break bricks from underneath and also from above in Mario World, Mario U, and 3D World. The Big Mushroom can break through all of these besides clouds from the top and bottom. The Cape, Tanuki Leaf, and Katsu can break or turn bricks from the side. The Hammer and Link's Bombs can break through everything but clouds. The Fire Flower's Fireballs can melt through the frozen coins, and let's go ahead and go through all the exclusive ones for that block, being the Burner, Potaboo, Fire Bar, Fire Balls, the Angry Sun, and a Fire Fish. From now on, they act exactly like the Hard Block group. The Shelmet can break through bricks, and the Spiny Shelmet can break all of them except clouds. Yoshi can break through the bricks, and the Large Stiletto can Ground Pound through all of them except clouds. Shells can break bricks, and the big shells can break through all of them, other than clouds again. Thwomps can break bricks and clouds, finally those things are broken, from the top, with big thwomps being able to break the rest. Spike balls can break bricks from the side, with the big ones being able to break all of the rest of them. However, it has to break the clouds from the top, and it cannot destroy it from the sides. Bombs can destroy everything from each side except for clouds. And Magic Koopas are also able to do the same thing, however they transform the block instead of just destroying it. Big Bowser Fire can break all types from all sides in the new Super Mario Bros. and 3D World style. Okay, well, except for clouds. Big Bowser can ground pound through all of the types of blocks here, or fall onto them in Mario U, while Big Bowser Jr. can ground pound through bricks and clouds. Fire Clown Cars can break through everything except for clouds once again. Icicles can break bricks, and Skewers can go through all of them. 
For the 3D world only ones, Boom Boom and Bullies act exactly the same where they can break bricks and the rest of them if they're big. Except for clouds. Koopa cars can break bricks. Bonsai Bills can break all of them except for clouds, although this one's really weird. They actually go through clouds instead of breaking through them, which I found very strange. And finally, I think the most interesting one, the explosion made by Parka Poppers when killed by fireballs can actually break stuff. All of them except for clouds. I didn't actually know that this actually exploded other things until a little while ago. Another interesting thing about this is it also doesn't damage the player. Something very interesting, I thought. If you have any of these in your level, which with how many of these there are you most likely do, then it's probably best to just go with ground as your walls and ceilings. There's really no reason to make things out of the other types of walls unless you want them to be destroyed, so I would just really just stick with ground for this one. This will make it to where nobody would be able to skip your level in any circumstance, and also, I just think ground looks nicer, so there's really not really a point unless your whole purpose is to get that wall destroyed. Also, completely unrelated, but this song playing right now is the new Minecraft record disc, Pig Step, and I absolutely love this song so much, it's by far my favorite record disc in Minecraft, so expect this song to be in future videos. Please check out this song later, it's so good. It's made by the composer from Celeste, so it's really great. Alright, now back to the video. We've got the next big thing that can easily lead to cheese being carryable items. This includes springs, pow blocks, pea switches, shells, crates, bob bombs snowballs, galoombas, and a few more things from Yoshi being all the power-ups, Yoshi eggs, fireballs, poison, wrenches, spike balls, and hammers. We also can't forget about the Bones from Dry Bones, who is, as we all know, the best Mario character. Dry Bones for Smash. These items are extremely helpful for creating puzzle-solving situations or just unique situations in general. However, they can easily lead to cheese if they're brought into a place where they aren't supposed to be. Let's go through some examples with a few of these items and how we can possibly make it impossible for them to take these somewhere else that can mess up the level. First off, let's start with the spraying. Now keep in mind that these examples will sound very specific, However, they can be applied to many situations. So in this example, what the player is supposed to do is bring a spring through a difficult section, well, difficult, and use it to get up the shaft. Then you enter a room where you have to collect a key with careful jumps on the line of blue platforms that loop around. However, instead of having to leave the spring behind, since this was made in New Super Mario Bros. U, you can actually wall jump with some tricky maneuvers and actually bring the spring with you. Once you have the spring through this door, you can just place it on the first blue platform, jump up to the last blue platform, get the key, get the spring again, and exit through the door. This obviously skips the whole challenge, and that's obviously not something you want. So how could we fix this? Well, here are a few solutions. One, make it not in the new Super Mario Bros. style, so that way they can't wall jump. However, this can lead to a whole bunch of other problems, so this is probably my least recommended of these strategies. Two, make the wall spike so the player can't wall jump, or they'd have to lose a power-up, which is a risk many players probably won't want to take. This one works alright, but then again, some players are risk-takers, so maybe not always. And finally, the best solution is to just remove the second wall so that there's nothing to wall jump off of. Also, quick note, if you do decide to do this, make sure that the player cannot get up onto that platform by any other method. In this example, they would actually be able to jump off the flying dry bones you can see in the corner, so make sure that's replaced with fireballs or something so that they can't get up here. Maybe replace it with the slope instead. Like I said, this example may seem specific, however many levels have a shaft like this, and I've been able to cheese quite a few levels with this strategy. What I suggest is just to modify this shaft to make sure players cannot wall jump. Next up is the POW block. For this example, the player has to use the POW blocks given to them to defeat the munchers at the end. Then they enter a boss fight where Bowser has to ground pound through these bricks. The cheese here is pretty simple to see. Since the POW block comes from a pipe at the very beginning, all the player has to do is after killing the muncher, simply just go backwards and grab another one, then bring it all the way to the end again, and since the muncher isn't there, he'll just be able to use the POW on Bowser. Bruh. The two best ways around this is to either not allow the player to go back by using a one-way, here. If you do this one though, make sure to have a reset door near the end, just in case the player might have dropped the POW on the way. Another thing you could do is not have the POW in a pipe, However, again, if you decide to do this, make sure to have a reset door so the player can retry, unless you only want them to have one chance. B-Switches is an easy one. 
I already covered it in my P-Switch video, but really quickly, if you have a P-Switch coming from a pipe, cover it with dotted P-Blocks, so if P-Switch is activated, you can't get another one. For more details on that and other P-Switch block related stuff, go check out that video. For our final item example, we'll quickly go through the shell. Basically, the player is supposed to go through a traditional segment, then enter a survival room where the player has to wait until a P-Switch is activated so he can leave. However, all Mario has to do is take a Koopa shell from the last section and break the brick blocks in your way. This one has several solutions. You can completely remove Koopas from your level, however, depending on how central Koopas were to your level, this could be a bit of a big and unnecessary solution. Or, you could just easily replace the brick blocks with P-Switch blocks instead, which is definitely the easier and better method. Since they're unbreakable, this would be the best method. As a bit of a bonus, since Koopa shells are able to kill the piranha plants that you're trying to survive from, if they're able to just kill them from the very start, then it'd be kind of a useless survival section. What you could do is just have one ways like this, so that way their fireballs can get through, but Mario can't. Now those were obviously only a few examples from the large list of items that we could see that could be held, so let me know if you guys want me to make a part 2, as there's definitely enough material to make a part 2 to this video, so please let me know. Now let's talk about some more advanced Kaizo tech. These are advanced techniques that can be done as either the level's intended route, or a way to make the level easier or shorter. I suggest getting yourself familiar with all of, or nearly all Kaizo techniques, to make sure that can't be done in some of your levels. Let's go over a few of them. The easiest one is a P-Switch jump, which allows you to jump one block higher when placed on the ground, or jump off on top of spikes, etc. If you drop down a spring, pow block, or even a crate at just the right time, you could jump off of it mid-air, which could lead to a large vertical or horizontal jump. Shell jumps can also allow the player to scale walls by simply throwing it at the wall and bouncing off of it again. Dropping a POW, crate, or even maybe a P-switch could let you enter aerial doors, which could lead the player to being able to skip a puzzle. For the final one we'll go over right now, the new Super Mario Bros. version of the nighttime desert theme, it's possible to wall jump up a wall without needing another one. It's really annoying to do, but it is possible. There are many more Kaizo tricks, but for now we'll just go over some of these. Most of them can be pretty easily fixed by just having a roof or a wall too high. In this example, just place a roof so the player can't use a spring jump to get up there. You may have also noticed that most of these have to do with items, so simply making it impossible for them to have items at this part like we discussed previously also works well. Like I said, there are so many different tricks so I suggest getting familiar with them. But when in doubt, have your walls go all the way up to the ceiling, and have ceilings in general, as this will help prevent a lot of skips. Now onto some pretty specific ones, but some that I run into quite a lot. In the jungle theme, people can just swim through your entire level from start to finish super easily, so the three best ways around this is 1. Make the water completely inaccessible, except in a few parts, but as long as it can't be used to swim through all of your level, it should be good. This example I'm showing on screen is a pretty simplistic level, however, if you have a more traditional level, these are generally okay to have some water bits showing, because then you can just kind of have two walls in between water, so it should generally be fine for traditional levels. However, do keep this in mind. Another one is to just simply move the goalpost up, however, this one will likely upset some players because they might just swim through the entire level expecting to be able to finish and then not be able to. Finally, the best one in my opinion is to just add a wall early on so that they can't enter the water or at least can't swim in it for long. Another similar situation can happen in castle levels as the dry bones shell and hammer suit can both ride over or build crates across lava. The same basically applies here. Make the lava inaccessible, make a wall or move the goal up, though again this one's not really advised. You could also just not have these items in your level or make sure these items can't be present in segments with lava that leads to the end. This, especially in the jungle theme, is probably some of the most common forms of cheese I see, so make sure if you're building a level in either of these themes, you are careful about how the player might be able to skip through using the liquid in your level. Another big cheese strategy is having a power-up in a section where you aren't supposed to. This could lead to some super easy areas or ways around obstacles. For example, here the player got a propeller suit from another section. However, now the player is supposed to get a fire flower to fight Bowser. However, they could just use the propeller suit to fly over the entire section, not needing to defeat Bowser at all. This is just one example, however, there are many similar things like this. So let's go through some of the ways to get rid of a power-up. The best method is to just have them go through a corridor where there's a saw and a mushroom in front of it, so that way it gets rid of their power-up, and just in case they don't have a power-up, they don't die. If you also want to make sure that they're small, just have this set up twice and just have donut blocks so that it waits out their invincibility frames. 
also i mean you could just like place a roof over it like i've been saying the whole video but you know i wanted to give a new tip but yeah just you could just place a roof to make it to where they can't fly over it at all anyway if you don't want them to have rideable things like Yoshi Goomba shoes or the dry bone shell, just simply have a cliff that's too high to jump up unless you have to jump out of the thing. These are all pretty simple solutions, but just make sure that these are included if you want them to have a specific power up at a specific part. This next one is sort of similar to the last one and that is holding an extra shelmet. A lot of the times, players will make a pipe dispense out a shelmet so that the player can do some sort of challenge with them. However, they ignore that the player can also just pick up another shelmet, which could possibly allow them to cheese a different segment where they shouldn't have one. The best way to prevent this from happening is to make it impossible for them to grab it at all. Here's a setup using a bumper, where the player will jump into the bumper to get a shelmet, but not be able to grab it. Just make sure when using this setup that you can't jump into the corners of the bumper, and instead only the middle, because if they jump into the corners, they could sometimes get stuck. You could also do this setup with one ways, however, those rarely work, it's very janky, so I suggest using the bumper setup, even if it might be a slight bit bigger. As for the final tip, it's a tip I'll give for any really video I make on this game, and that is, it's very, very important to get your levels play tested. Have somebody that you know play them through, and watch how they play to make sure that they don't do anything incorrectly, cheese it, or maybe they can give you suggestions. I suggest doing this for literally every single level you make, and this is one of the best methods in finding cheese. For example, my level, A Visit to the Dog Park, is based off the secret mechanic where a Koopa hit out of its shell will make a barking noise, or make a meowing noise depending on its color in the Super Mario World style, when on top of music blocks. I wanted to make a level where these barks would line up with the chain chomps on screen. Here's a quick playthrough of some of the level. Now my main concern of this level was making sure the player could not have the shell from the Koopa from the very start in order to kill the Chain Chomps, as if the Chain Chomps died, then the barking would not make any sense. So what I did was make a creation to destroy the shell upon entering the door and ask my brother to playtest that part over and over and try to break it, and he was able to. A lot. So with his help, I went from this, to this, which we're pretty sure makes it impossible to take a shell with you, and yeah, it's quite the step up from the original design. But that's what I mean. He was able to show me the faults in my level, and then I was able to fix them, which is why it is so very, very, very important to get your levels playtested. If you don't have anyone locally to test your level, which by the way is probably the best, then what you could do is just go into the multiplayer co-op mode, then just die and view how the other player is doing it. It isn't perfect, but it can get you an idea of where it might need some fixing. Another way is to make a copy of the course, then upload it and send the ID to your friends or onto other Discord servers. Link to my own Discord in the description, cough cough. Then fix whatever is needed. Delete the original upload and rinse repeat until it's perfect. Also, fun fact, the level I gave as an example is actually a remake of one of my original levels in Mario Maker 1. It's the only remake I've done and I'm really happy with how it turned out. But anyways, that's it for this video. Was I able to help you with preventing your levels from being cheesed? Let me know in the comments. There's definitely a ton of more ways a player can cheese a level than what I said here, but I kind of wanted this video to be under 20 minutes, so I decided to make it kind of short. However, I might make a part 2, so please let me know if you guys want that. And if you did enjoy this video, please make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel as it would help me out a ton. Links to my Twitter and Discord along with my Maker ID are all in the description. Also, I got a brand new microphone, so please let me know if it sounds right or if it sounds a bit off and how I might be able to change it in the comments as well. Also, I want to thank you all so super duper much for 25,000 subscribers. It's, it's really incredible. Thank you guys so much for that. I have a special video planned coming up really, really soon uh, about that, so please stay tuned for that. But anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.